Welcome back to 16 by 9, The Bigger Picture. When 27-year-old Megan Baker became one of thousands of women diagnosed with breast cancer every year, she vowed she would fight. She created a special list to remind her of everything she had to live for. Well, tonight our Carolyn Jarvis brings you a heart-wrenching story that defines courage, strength, and everlasting love. My story uh, began just over a year ago, actually, in September of last year. Uh, I was doing a routine self-exam, uh, and I felt something that was a little bit off. At 28, Megan Baker was embracing life. She had just fought and won a battle with one of the most deadly diseases, breast cancer. I've been jabbed with more needles than anyone should ever be jabbed with in their entire lifetime. Eager to move forward, she was studying to become a nurse, volunteering at a local hospital, and madly in love. A young woman with everything to live for. Hi everyone, we're here at the Run for the Cure. It's almost 9.30. When she ran in the Run for the Cure earlier that fall, she wore the special pink t-shirt reserved for survivors. Her year-long ordeal getting to this finish line began in South Korea, where Megan and the love of her life, Adam, were both teaching. Iris, how are you? Me? Yeah, you. How are you? That's when she found a lump. We both went in to talk to the doctors um, about the results of the biopsy. and They sat us down in, in you know, broken English and... Uh, completely uncomfortable with telling a foreigner this awful news. The doctor told her that she had breast cancer. And it was about 2 o'clock in the morning when I got the phone call and she said, Mom, I've just come from the doctor and I have cancer and it is, it is malignant. Megan moved home to Ontario and began treatments right away. Adam had to return to his home in Washington, D.C., but he started commuting regularly back and forth. And while Megan found support and care back home in Petrolia, Ontario, there were few resources for young women battling this killer disease. So Adam suggested she change that and chronicle her fight online. Her accounts were open, honest, and very raw. December 1st, 2008. I have 37 staples that close a wound that starts in the middle of my chest and ends in my armpit. December 14th. Sometimes it's hard not to cry. It happens randomly and more often than I would care to admit. For someone who described herself as being private, the photos made public were shocking. I really want people to know that I am not embarrassed of this. Breast cancer happened to me and I'm beating it. This is what my body looks like now and I don't want to be ashamed. Little by little, Megan's online following grew from a few dozen to a few hundred to a couple thousand. I would read her blog and then I would read the comments from the readers and think, my God, this is all over the world. Every country, there are people responding to her blog. And it was on that blog that Megan posted a list of her life goals and she made one thing absolutely clear. Don't call this a bucket list. No one is planning on dying. Megan was always making lists. It was a joke with her friends because she was always organizing. Her life list is impressive. More than 25 items long, everything from getting a PhD to running a half marathon. Getting married was on there too. No pressure, Adam, she wrote. It was very important to her. She was not going to give up. She wanted to live every second she had left and she wasn't going to sit and feel sorry for herself in this list would keep her busy and if she finished her list she was going to make another list. There was one thing that Megan definitely did not have on her list but it was about to happen anyway. December 2009, five months after her radiation was over, five months after she was sure she had cancer beat, Megan started getting headaches. Finally one day she came out to me in the morning and she said mama I think I have to go to the hospital. We came back to the office to the doctor and we're ushered into his office and he just looked at her and he said, Megan, 
I, I don't know what to say to you. The cancer has metastasized to your brain and it's not good. There aren't words in the English or any language that convey what that felt like. Did it spread, the cancer? It spread really quickly. Um, within a month, it, it was in every like major organ, and within two months, it was like completely crippling. Crippling, perhaps, but Megan kept living and kept writing. I want everyone to know that I will be completing the application to the University of Toronto. It's due on the 15th, and I do intend to be accepted. I'm not ready to die yet. Her readers sent her messages of encouragement and support, and she reminded them of that list. I'm not stopping until I achieve everything on it. One by one, Megan started to work her way down that list, ticking items off, including that day in late March when she and Adam were married in a quiet ceremony in her backyard. I was so pleased, and so was Bill, to see that she finally was marrying somebody that she really, really loved, and he really loved her. And it was a love story. When love is this great, they call it blind. And that was exactly the case here. While Megan knew what she was up against, Adam didn't want to hear that the woman he loved so much was dying. If it was important to her, we would sit and talk about that list of things she needed to tell us. And she did the same thing with her father. And I know she tried to talk to Adam, but Adam really didn't want to hear that she was going to pass away. Still, Adam was with her through two rounds of chemo, radiation, a mastectomy. And he was with her one month after they were married, when Megan passed away. She made sure that everybody else was okay and that she told us all that it was going to be okay. And then just kind of peacefully laid back and went to sleep. Megan is gone, but her dreams and her lists live on. When we come back, her husband Adam finds hope in spite of his loss. Still to come on 16 by 9. It was really important for me to, to finish these goals because they're so important to her and such a big part of who she was. That's all coming up. We're back with the bigger picture. When Megan Baker died, she left behind her hopes and dreams, unfinished business that weighed heavily on her family. And her husband wasn't about to let her special list be buried along with her. Here again is our Carolyn Jarvis. There's a saying, to live like you're dying. For most of us, it only serves as a reminder to value every day. But for Megan Baker, it was how she approached a life she knew was ending. I went through six rounds of chemotherapy, and I have had 25 sessions of radiation. Megan was aware that cancer had a deadly grip on her, but that didn't stop her from living life to the fullest for the short time she had left. <laughs> In the few months that have passed since her death, Megan's childhood room has remained untouched. It's She's still here. Room. She's here with us. She is. And while Megan's parents mourn her passing in the quiet spaces of her childhood home, Megan's husband, Adam, is mourning in a very different way. Shortly after losing his wife, he announced to thousands that he had some unfinished business. My name is Adam Warner. I am studying a big, I guess, international service project in the memory of my late wife, uh, who's Megan Baker. Adam picked up exactly where Megan left off, continuing her blog and her list. I had like 10 minutes after she passed away. I just felt like it would be, it was really important for me to, for, to finish these goals because they were, they were so important to her and such a big part of who she was. And the story of Adam's plan to finish Megan's list drew readers to the blog by the thousands. So how many people are reading about your journey now in Megan's name? Like uh, 10,000 plus. And those followers started to give. Five dollars, ten dollars. Before long, complete strangers had donated six thousand dollars for Adam's journey. Does that blow you away? It absolutely blows me away, yeah. It's amazing that uh, people are affected by her and, and think it's so important to, and that she's, I don't know, deserving of all this. This summer, that money helped Adam buy a ticket to Vancouver. 
he began one of Megan's dreams, taking a train across Canada. It is a quiet journey. His wedding ring now on the opposite hand, he takes in the views that she longed to see. It's no different than the commitment you make when you marry somebody. It's, it's all or nothing and it's for life and she's still a part of my life that's not going to stop. There are glimpses of joy, but they're bittersweet. Like when Adam went to a Blue Jays game with Megan's friends and crossed another item off her list. Coming to these things is two-sided. It's really fun because you're with your friends, but it's also, it's also disappointing and sad that she can't be here for this because I know how much it meant to her. read this list and it's daunting. It's absolutely daunting and it's it's not going to get finished anytime soon. Are there any ones on the list that you go, oh gosh, really, Megan? <laughs> uh, definitely the running one. <laughs> really? That is my least favorite one. And so Adam is running, a little at a time, but he's doing it. He's also reading 12 books a year. That was her goal. And he's learning how to crochet. Mastering. Mastering which? Crocheting, knitting, and sewing. It gets weirder from here. Megan also wanted to master the cornet. Uh, that is the randomest instrument, and I think it's kind of an annoying one. Uh, you have no. to master it? I don't know if I'll master that one. I might give it a shot. And... She wouldn't mind if you fudged that one a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she'd be okay with that one. <laughs> well, the cornet may have to wait, because Adam's biggest test to date is waiting for him halfway around the world. Item number 14 on the list, travel to India to volunteer at an orphanage. So far, India is really, really hot and I'm sweating a lot. It is here where poverty is rampant, that joy is unfiltered, pure and concentrated. At a a couple of conversations with a number of the older kids about why I'm here and who Megan was and uh, they, they have a surprising amount of insight I think into, into these sort of things. It is here that children with nothing teach Adam there was once again something to smile about. One of them told me that I have a uh, I have a head and heart problem, and that um, coming here will change it, and once I leave, it'll be fixed. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of like a, a nice sentiment, I think. Um, and it's surprising coming from a 12-year-old. A and while his blog still speaks of immense pain, one of his most recent entries saying, don't stop, can't stop, those close to him know at some point he may have to. The time will come when he needs to realize that it's time to get on with his own life and he has our blessing and Megan would certainly want him to get on with his life too but he's gone looking for answers and he's mourning very deeply and I hope he finds what it is he's needing to find. How much of it though is living for her instead of living for yourself? I think from the outside it kind of looks like that because they were her goals but they I mean they're both of our goals. In his way, Adam is getting on with his life. It's just that so much of his life is still Megan. The memories she left him and the lessons she taught him. Don't give up. Just constantly fight. I mean, life is, life is hard. Everybody knows that. Life is full of struggles and hardships. But it's important to not let that ever beat you and to keep accomplishing things. And if you do that, maybe, just maybe, you take a sad story and give it an ending that's just a little happier. What do you think she would think about the fact that you're completing the list? I think she'd be pretty happy about it, yeah. And that's it for us tonight. If you have a story idea, just call us at 1-877-TELL-69 or visit our website at global16by9.com. I'm Mary Garofalo. Thank you for watching. And from all of us here, good night. If you've got a story idea for 16 by 9, call our tip line. 
16 by 9. The bigger picture. That's a wrap.